Yeah, and hello and welcome back. So I just killed my recalling, but I guess you will not be able to see it if I do everything right with the clipping system. So um, right here, we have now this following problem. Ho this whole area is of course not constructed, but the Mawa guys cannot stand because this is open space. What you see here is the fortification below it, which means they need a floor to be able to walk on. So put down the floor with F. I'm running out of stone. <laughs> and put down the floor so you can construct this area. Then we're going to remove the stone and then we are putting down this again, which is quite obnoxious. And I will show you how to avoid this in the, with the next tower I'm building. But first off, we really need some stone. Okay, so what stone is this? This is chalk too. Okay, so uh, what I'm putting down some chalk here. We should have enough chalk, by the way. This is this is weird. I think they cannot reach it or something. I think it was because it was four chalk around them. Huh, interesting. Oh yeah, they built a sandy downward stairway, not a uh, upward downstairs okay so here's our problem okay so build it there and you guys just wait up there until you are able to go up and down again okay now it works okay so okay this guy still cannot reach the area i want him to reach chuck you know what i'm going to build it one higher because then it's easier for me to show you how to solve the issue with the with the fortification so you don't need to build and remove everything because it's that that one is really annoying okay remove this thing reader again <laughs> when i haven't spoken english for a while i am ten i tend to use german words they're just like out there so all of a sudden i'm like ah damn it i didn't want it to say it <laughs> okay Yeah, we are, we are going one higher even. This should work. And I'm building it as if I don't have a moat. What about that? Okay, while they are still removing, we can already put up the next wall. And we're going to do it this way. Um, actually, do I want it to build this way? Yes, I actually want to build this way. So the top platform should be a bit wider than the lower platforms. For the simple reasons, uh, reasons. <laughs> for the simple reasons that um, you want a ledge at the end, because that will make it impossible for enemies to climb it. The uh, edge has to be too wider than the lowest platform, so they cannot just jump up, and they need to be too higher than this area down here. Like they will need to jump from here all the way up here to grab the ledge. All the way up here to grab the ledge will not happen. That's why it needs to be at least two higher than the lowest points I can stand on. And it needs to be two wider than your area down here, because then even a legendary climber cannot reach the corner of that. So this is how you put it down. Okay, next floor. More chuck. And then down here, more chuck. Okay, so uh, they should have dug out the uh, special area I want it here so what you need um, for um, a baluster is a BW for workshops and then you go to where's a siege siege engineer was it E I don't trust myself anymore <laughs> well, Closias Mason's cost of siege workshop it was S Okay, put it down here. It's bigger than any other workshop. You, keep to, you need to keep that in mind. Okay, just wait till it's finished here. And then I'm telling him to put down a lot. Wait a second, why are you down here drinking? Isn't there enough drink up here? Why is there no drink up here? 
It says drink all this food, prepared food. So a drink should be here. Huh, interesting. Okay, it looks like I need to brew a lot. Okay, and is it finished? Looks finished, yes. Okay, you need someone with the job of creating uh, siege equipment. And what you want for training is a catapult, three parts. And what you want for shooting is a ballista, three part each. Okay, I'm setting this to repeat. And then we need some arrows, but we talk about this one later. Okay, they actually managed to remove this whole area here. So now I can put it down like this. F here, F here. F here and F here. Okay, one higher. So I are finishing the upper platform right now. I'm even going one step further. This will be um, three times wider than it needs to be. Because up here we are going to put down our last set of fortifications. But this time we're taking in consideration that we actually need to be able to get on these sides. So first thing, of course, this is now like this. So still my dwarves cannot reach this corners. This is why right at the beginning when you do this, keep in mind they need to reach it. So I think put down some floors. Wait a second. Put down some floors on the side, B, C, F, and here we go. Because this way I can really easily just put up this whole thing. Okay, so B, C, F, fortification, and here we go. Putting up a fortification down here. Putting up a fortification down here. Putting up the fortification down here. And here. And of course on the corners. No, wait a second, not on the corners. On the corners. At this special case, I want a wall. And you always should think with wall corners. Actually, I don't want a wall there. No, no, no. This goes... I just had an epiphany. Okay. This will be, of course, also fortification. Fortification. Fortification and a fortification. And oh, yeah, he isn't finished with the floor yet. Okay, now fortification. And let's get one higher with my stairs. X. Okay, so I let them build the stuff and have a look down here on where my mode will be. B, C, T, no, this was a track. <laughs> B, T, big S, uh, capital S. And then I'm putting down the spears. Okay, uh, so far I only have eight of them, but I'm just putting down the trap with eight. Because I'm actually alright with this. Shift enter to just select them all. And then D, done selecting, and your trapper will go and build the next trap. Okay, this whole area is finished now. So, of course, we need to remove these ramps or the floors, basically, uh, that we needed to um, create the cornerstones. But this time, we're going to be smarter about it. Because a fortification is not creating a, st a floor one higher. So, this is open space. What is creating a floor higher 
is a wall. That is why after removing this area, in no time, <laughs> sometimes this game just wants to get on your nerves. Okay, so putting up a wall here. Of course, the good doctor takes a bit longer than the rest of them. B, C, wall. I'm using uh, bauxite, by the way, because it's red, and I kind of like these red cornerstones. And put it up here. Okay, so now we have this wall here, and when you go one up, you see it's a floor. So it's a walkable perimeter, which means that my dwarves can easily reach the s side over there, and I can also build a fortification on top of it. No, not right now, because I don't have access to it. But on stuff like floors, you cannot build anything on top of it. I can show you what I mean in a second. You don't want redstones to be your floor, because then you cannot see blood. And most of the time, I only notice that my dwarf has been, as that one of my um, crossbow dwarfs has been injured during a battle, because there will be blood on the floor. So yeah, keep that in mind. Okay, so this will be interesting because this will be the end. <laughs> One of them is despairing already. Yeah, you can here yeah, see this is uh, the floor I built. B, C, and when I want to build a wall on that, it says construction present. Why when I'm putting it up here, um, okay, I'm saying nothing because it's not finished yet. And they are building the stuff in the filthy slime rain, so this will not work out at all. Anyway, so the first siege engine should be ready now. B, E, no, not E. What was it? I? No. I was I. Okay. Um, how much do I have? I don't have three ballista parts. Why don't I have three ballista parts? Because my miner is my siege engineer. Insane. Okay, insane. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Uh, let him construct the stuff. He's not even finished with the catapult, so this will take a while. But I'm already chopping down these trees here. I need wood anyway, and there's also deeper meaning to it, which you will get in a few minutes. Okay. Oh, holy shit, he's still creating tables. How much tables do I have? Okay, that's still all right. Okay, build door here, build door here, build door here, build door here, putting up a table, putting up a chair, putting up a table, another table, and another table and a chair. And a bed. Oh, I don't have any beds. Okay, I will just remove one bed from here. So I will put it up there. So this is for my mayor later. Okay. I do have a uh, good idea for the mayor later, but right now we need to concentrate on this area. Okay, so now I built everything around here. And as you can see, these are walkable parameters, which means that I could like build a wall up right here. And they will be able to reach everything now. Like I could build it, build it, uh, not build it up here like this, because then they couldn't reach it from here, but they could reach it from here. And yeah, this is just how it works. So, but what I'm doing, going to do now is I'm going to s build an end to it because this is my top level. And what some players are doing is they are leaving. I'm on box side. Um, they are leaving this there. I really need to concentrate here, otherwise I need to 
I will do everything 10 times and I would like to try to avoid that. This will be a long episode as it is. Okay, bauxite, floor, bauxite, another floor, you guessed it. And I don't need to care about the cornerstones because I know that they can stand next to it and put it down. Floor here and the floor here. Okay, so what most players will do now, because this is the top, this will be uh, like a closed area right now. Like this big area here is the is the tower looking down across this whole section where my enemy needs to travel along. Yep, where they need to travel along. And why are you up here screaming? Lost in despair. <laughs> you don't know how to get home because he's despairing so hard. Yeah. Um, what I was about to say is that, yeah, this will be the end. And what most players are doing is they are putting up a hatch down here and then they lock it and they just forget about it because, well, the enemy cannot reach it anymore. So you just put it up and downstairs here. Don't make an um, upstairs downstairs that way normally. Just downstairs and then put a hatch on it. Then you can close the hatch and don't have to worry about flying animals coming in. But I never liked that idea. Um, what I like more is the idea of being able to reach the roof at any time. Which is exactly what we are going to do. And for that I am removing an area around my staircase. Second, I it actually doesn't need to be this big at all. But it should look all right, so. You need something that they can stand to the left and to the right. Everything else is fine like this. Okay. Still, I only need a downstairs. This was actually bullshit. Yeah, just remove the stairs too. You need the last thing only needs to be downstairs, not an upstairs, downstairs. An upstairs and a downstairs could leave you with problems. No, 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 no. It was actually okay in the way it was. Sorry, I'm just... Okay, remove designation. We leave it like this and we build a pure downstairs. No, actually, we want it outside. Okay, forget everything I said. Remove this one. Not this, only the stairs. Last one, it needs to be a downstairs. Everything else is... Just a lot more work. Yeah, okay, this is a lot more work in general. So if he wants hatch covers, yeah, I need to make hatch covers anyway. <laughs> this is much more work than if you just put a hatch cover on it, but I kind of like the, my idea better. You will see what it is soon. Take forever, okay. So why they are building around there? B I Ballister. No, still not three parts for the ballister. So we're we waiting for new ballister parts. A human bard is visiting. That's nice. We have a lot of bards now. We don't have any mercenaries yet, but they will come, I'm pretty sure. Sooner or later. Okay. Um, he's despairing. Nothing serious. Okay, they removed stairs, so B, C, upstairs, downstairs. Where is it? Uh, no, just downstairs. D. Bam. Okay. Now, this is interesting. You now build a wall along here and uh, upstairs, downstairs in this side 
we need to remove that later, but I can build that right now because I have the time. Okay, let's put in more weapon traps. I want to do all of my defenses in this episode. Even, by the way, it's a, it's a actually a good idea that I am putting a building. It's like I don't have a mode because just keep in mind um, we have winter in this area, which basically means that enemies can cross the ice. So, actually, this is really helpful. Okay, more spear traps. Here we go. Okay, um, what you don't want is your off dwarves falling in here and not being able to crawl out of the water. Or if you want, if an enemy has a good weapon and he lands in here and drowns, well, you also want to be able to reach the water, which is why you need a ramp to go down here. This is just why you channel out an area next to it. So your dwarf has at least a chance on reaching the area towards the outside. And if the enemy drops in, well, he also can leave, but it's better than not being able to access it. That's what I'm saying here. Okay. Now we can also actually close down the whole area by placing a wall up here. Who are you? Oh, you see human bards, that's just right. Okay, how are the things going up here? They uh, removed almost, almost everything. Putting up a wall up here, of course, a wall up here, a wall up here. Then we're going one higher. And of course, this whole area needs a roof too, because then otherwise the enemy will just fly in. So three spaces and this is not working. Of course, because I need to have a uh, downstairs here. I need to go one higher to be able to get one low. And I just made a huge mistake. Oh, damn it. Okay, yeah, remove this thing. Forget about this area. We actually need to build it outside of the main wall, or this will not work. So we move one area from up here. Sometimes, like the simplest task, the simplest tasks are like giving you so much of a headache. <laughs> it's crazy. That's that small fortress for you. Okay. Still getting more spikes. That's nice. Let's see if I'm finally able to build down my first baluster. Yes, I am. Okay, the first baluster you want to place like this. Okay, can only place one down anyway, so yeah. Remember that the baluster um, will fire, release its bolt, then it will go straight ahead and kill everything that is trying to cross this bridge. Um, which makes this a really good target because you have a three space to cover here and the enemy has to cross it. Uh, Tour are pairs of wishes to reside in stone logs for the purpose of entertaining citizens and visitors. What is his name? Pura? Tura or no more? Oh, that's just the guy that just visited. Yeah, I don't think we need anything like that, any of that right now, because we have a performer and we also have a tavern keeper. Maybe later. Okay, let's see. Okay, they finally finish, finished it. Putting up a wall here and a wall here. And upstairs, where are you? You. Upstairs here. Okay, we will finish this. Swear to God. Maybe I will not put down spikes everywhere because that would take time. <laughs> It's kind of pointless anyway, but uh, yeah. Okay, so you finished. So BC, U, one higher, put it up here. Um, why? 
Oh yeah, because uh, I just clicked up, not down. Uh, downstairs. There you go. Downstairs. Chuck. The bam. Okay, remove this one because this was a mistake. I don't need the downstairs there. Upstairs here is done. Upstairs here is done. Once this is removed, we are ready to go. He's <laughs> still lost in despair. Come on, there need some people need to remove the stuff. Please move. <laughs> this takes forever. Okay. How's the ballista going? Ballista is still under construction. I think the only guy that is. Oh, maybe I should step back from this whole hematite thing, but going right to the steel bars. Okay. So. While we are waiting for him to snap into it again. Because right now we cannot reach this area because we need to be able to walk <laughs> among here. And we cannot reach this area to remove this ramp. Because this guy is standing there. On the floor that we want to remove. Okay. Maybe we can put up a floor. That should be able. Should be able to do that. Yeah. Okay. Put down the floor here. Put down the floor here. As soon as this is able. Okay. You know what? We are starting to build the traps. B, T, S. Upright weapons. Here we go. I'm just putting down four or whatever I can get. Because then it doesn't take so long. You, of course, want a full ten spikes if you can get it. This is going ahead because every spike has a chance to hit an enemy when he falls. Oh, he moved. Nice. Okay. So, which means that we can finally go up here. Yeah, this is more difficult than you would think. It's kind of the charm on Dwarf Fortress, because in other games that wouldn't be an option at all. Okay. We have a fight. What fight do we have? Oh, he just has become enraged. Okay. Nothing, nothing serious. Are they even training? No. But you go home right now. Because you are outside the whole time. Okay. get it done and you guys get it done up here and then we are ready to go I can actually already build the floor okay here we go wall chat chalk okay Okay, floor here, box side, and then we're doing the clever thing once the that is done. See how long it takes even with, with the teleport on? Like this is like um, something you really want to start at the beginning of winter. Because in winter you have the best chance of no invading armies arriving. And then you have a lot of time to build this thing up. So you can fully concentrate on building a tower. It's safe right now. Nobody can get in here. Like the only way to reach it is from inside my fortress. Which is the whole, whole point of building a thing like that. But it would be much nicer if it would actually uh, be available right now. Okay, here we go. So we have a roof on here. We have a roof on this whole area. And this is still a walkable perimeter. But what you're doing is we are putting down a door. And you want a master piece wall door because that can take the most punishment. 
most animals that can fly are not building destroyers, so they cannot just break down the door. But if they do, well, we are putting down some cage traps. Just in case. In front of this door. Okay. Then we are removing the upstairs here. Come on, what are you doing anyway? I'll say it here. Okay. This takes five up. Okay. So, what I was talking about was why has nobody built a baluster? Do I even have someone with. I think we only have one guy that is actually able to build ballistas and such. And he is. Working on building new ones, uh, <laughs> so much for that. So, um, number one is shooting along here. Number two is going one higher. And number three is going to be all the way up here. It looks weird right now, but it will totally make sense once it's finished. And to finish it, by the way, we are telling our siege engineer right now to please stop. Because right now we have enough. And this takes forever. Okay. So here we go. Take away this there. And then our tower will be finished. And then we will put up some stuff. And care more about its surroundings because the surroundings are also something we need to work on normally this whole area wouldn't be a, um, a tavern normally this would be my first step of uh, defense like everybody in here would be a crossbow dwarf shooting out while they are trying to cross the bridge underneath but not this time this time I'm doing it a bit differently okay and we have three ballistas. So, number one shooting here, number two shooting here, number three shooting here. So if I am releasing all three bolts at the same time, they will go straight up this bridge and kill everything and everybody that they are touching or ripping them apart, injuring them badly. The only thing they can do is they can roll away. So if they roll away, they will fall down in here, which is why you should also have spike or cage traps or anything like that down here. Which I'm not going to do right now because I am still setting up this cage traps. Okay. We're actually doing this now a lot of different. <laughs> At this point, this is only for show. At least for me, this. You, as I said earlier, you do want to have the maximum amount of spikes. Otherwise, those will do no bad damage at all. But you should do it before you float the mode, so better be quick about it. Okay, put down this hole. And then our bolt tower is finished. It's one, two, three stories high when it comes to fighting. Then we have this area down here. And this area down here where we can put in food and ammunition, which is what I'm going to do. Yeah, we have no ammo for the ballistas. Okay, I have iron. You can just assemble a wooden arrow in the in the um, siege engine shop, and then you can have wooden bolts. But well, I can make steel. I can make some of steel, so that's what I'm going to do. Steel ballista arrowhead is what I'm going for here. I'm building three of those, and then I will assemble it and show you how it's done. Okay. Everything here is closed. This is good. Okay, now we have an area where we can put on our crossbow dwarfs. So that is what I'm going to do. And because of this, everybody needs to come here. So 
even were creatures, evil creatures, anything that cannot fly has to pass here and my guys will see it. So, putting down a new barrel. Barrel number one. In this case, I didn't have set up an alarm barrel yet. So I'm adding a new one. The first one should always be your alarm barrel. Okay, enter. If you're more interested in how this works, um, look up my episode, Placing Your Military. Or something like that. It's a tutorial. You will find it. Okay, so this is the bolt tower. Okay, and I'm going to put down an arrow because then I know that this is an arrow area. And I am using red. No, wait. See? I'm using red on white. And this should be it. Okay, so marking this area and this area so this is where they will station military schedule the cutting wings should be stay standing there so um, give order you now first off edit order I want four of you guys to, to uh, no, two of you guys to train shift on copy and paste And I want to give a new order and defend the bolt tower with at least three guys. Shift enter. Later it should be more, but right now we only need three guys. Um, we only have six guys in our military anyway, so one always has a pause. The rest of them are working. Copy and paste it all the way down here. Okay, so. I am putting down some food for them down here and some drinks down here. Damn food, block everything, leave prepared food. Okay, here we go. Drinks, same stuff. Allow food, block everything, only allow drinks. Permit, permit. And maximum barrels. We don't need maximum bins, we need maximum uh, barrels. Okay, and then they will just fill it up. So, ammunition. I'm putting up the ammunition up here because that is where my dwarves are firing from. So, delete, allow ammo, bolts, arrows, blow darts, everything like that. Just bring everything up here but siege ammunition. So, I think it wasn't even here. No, Siege Engineer is under furniture, just so you know. Okay, talking about Siege Engineering, do I have enough steel to make all these bolts? I think so. So we are going to assemble steel arrows, steel ballast arrows. You don't want to fire them before you have a good and well-trained Siege Engineer, uh, Siege Operator. And now I'm showing you how to train your siege engineer and the way you want to do that is you want to have your siege engineer be able to train by just shooting his siege weapon okay and putting down this range here doesn't need to be that big I'm just I just like to have it that big yeah that's what she said Okay, down here. Actually, make them three wide. The stones are flying to the left and to the right like crazy at the beginning when your guys aren't good at their stuff. And uh, you will see that soon. Okay, how is it looking? We are actually getting a lot of cherry bolts up here. I think it's about time we start creating steel bolts ourselves. And we have two guys just looking out for enemies. Okay, one more thing. Don't build it like this. Build it like this. Um, redefine. And yeah, define and delete, delete, delete. Currently painting R. So remove this middle section. 
your guys will still be able to run up and down and grab the armor because it's lying right there. But they will not stand in the middle. They will actually stand on the outside areas. Because otherwise they could stand here or here and then they will, won't be able to spot anything. <laughs> it's just a thing you're learning. <laughs> We're playing this game and getting frustrated. Okay. Nothing is more frustrating. Actually, there are a lot more things that are more frustrating in this game. But <laughs> there aren't a lot of things more frustrating um, that than your dwarves being able to fire, having ammunition, but not firing because they cannot see the enemy, because you built something wrong, or because they are standing too far in. Uh, stuff like that. You get my point, I guess. At least that's what I'm hoping. And so avoid at all cost your that your uh, bolt dwarves cannot see the enemy. That's so also why I put one down here and this area up here. Because if someone would stand here, this whole big platform could not shoot at him. That's why I have guys standing here, because they can shoot, shoot straight down there. Okay. How are we going with the steel bolts? Once they are assembled, they should be loaded straight into my... Yeah. Seat, uh, bolt number one is in. The other bolts aren't, of course. Okay. But as soon as he's done, I'm going to build uh, my catapult. Which you remember was the first thing I built. Have it up here. You don't need to have it near your ballistas, but I just like to have them there because... Uh, just roleplay reasons, I guess. <laughs> Never really got, gave it much shock. It would be actually better to have them like in the middle of the fortress. Because these things are walking with stones. And your guy will constantly be on the lookout for new stones. Oh, here we have him. Paco. Paco is our siege operator. Okay. You should have at least one dedicated siege operator. Better would be to have three op um, siege operators. That are doing nothing but siege operating. You will see soon why. Okay, my guys are just standing up here. Lordem, you were also in the fight, weren't you? As I was saying, not no problem. Fußpilz, no problem. Okay, good to know. Okay, so now back to the point. Defense operator, okay, back to the point. <laughs> Damn it. I'm really sorry. Okay, need drinking food storage items. Okay, I'm all run out of barrels, but I should have to have enough to fill everything up. There's barrels. Why are you? Where are all my barrels going? I need to check that. Uh, not right now. Back to the point. <laughs> it's the third time. God damn it. Okay, so my guys are looking down here, and as I just told you, they cannot see this area here. Big problem trees. And you cannot shoot your crossbow bolts through a tree because this counts like a wall. So if I would have an enemy standing down here, my guys right now couldn't shoot them because th they are under the trees. Which means that these trees need to be cut down. You cannot, uh, you need to have a clear space so you can shoot bolts down range. What you of course can do now is just, oh yeah, DT and then I'm cutting this down and oh here's another one. Yeah, I'm cutting this down too. Okay, and then this one. Yeah. Okay, this works. It even works faster. You know that you can just box select them. But the problem is, trees are regrowing. And sometimes you don't pay attention for the redrawing tree, and then an enemy invading army arrives, and you're suddenly like, oh, shit. Now I have this perfectly set up bolt tower here, but my guys cannot shoot them because they are in cover of the trees. So. What you want is an auto chop. And what you're doing is you are creating an auto chop dashboard. So this is when we are creating a new burrow. And let's create two more burrows because this will be military, this will all be military, and this will be my tree burrow. And the last thing I am naming is a what do you call a free field? Of fire field of view, no, and I call it clearing. Okay, it's going to be 
clearing. Enter. See, um, it's going to have a um, green font on a green background. And I am giving it this thing. Because then I always know what to do. You can always use something different. It's just the way that I'm doing it. Okay. And now you're creating a burrow, basically. Okay. Up here, too, because you also always want this cleared so your caravans can actually arrive. Because it can happen that the, the trees are growing so tight together that the caravans cannot arrive. And you will only find out after the caravan arrives and tells you, oh, no, our caravans cannot stop here. Because of reasons. So this whole area is, of course, also a no tree area. And this is a no tree area. And this is why you see why I'm often in trouble with the elves. <laughs> but I need this open space. And this will be also our main wood resource. So that's the upside to it. Make sure you're covering everything, not only where currently trees are growing, but where you are expecting that trees could really grow at any time and where you really don't want trees to be around. Okay, also, if there is like here, a cliff up here, uh, make sure you also um, cover this area because it's really frustrating if the enemy is trying to just, uh, has to come from up here and then he has to run all the way around and they could shoot him the whole time, but trees are in the way, so cut down the trees. Okay, so now we have our clearing barrel. Escape back, escape back. And we just talked about this, DT auto chop dashboard. So, clearing. You will also, you only uh, chop in the selected barrels of clearing. You are auto chopping, which means you are always chopping. And I can designate now, so they will just swarm out and clear everything that I uh, put down. And I can make up a minimum and a maximum locks that is there so you will not get into trouble with the elves. Okay, I'm setting this to no limit. As long as there are trees in this area, I want them to destroy the trees. Like just cut them down. I don't even care about using them. I just want them gone. Escape leaf. Return to game and every tree in here is getting an automatic chop. Yeah, and uh, this is how we do it. Okay, this area is nearly finished. BTS. Oh, nice. We actually have some more spikes we can put up. Don't even have to. Okay. At least we have enough wood. <laughs> Always see the upside. So. And where is my guy? Yeah. Don't need more wooden spikes. Thank you very much. I guess there are a lot of wooden spikes just lying around. Oh, not a lot. Okay, it's all right. So, next star. Uh, next stop, creating a mode. Oh, we are getting a new season. So, but while it's loading, I can talk about this. So, you want the mode to be connected to the river or to a water source that is steady coming in. Why do we want that? Well, because it's easier this way. So um, if you need to take water away, it will refill itself. And you actually have a water source nearby, which is always nice. So what you need to keep in mind is, do you want this moat, uh, this, this river, towards the moat to be def defensive or not? Um, I sometimes like to not have everything just built for defense purposes because uh, making the game a lot cheaper than it should be. <laughs> it, it can make things ridiculously easy. So you need to settle for a bridge. That's what I'm saying here. Um, the easiest way, of course, building a bridge is just putting down floor bars. And then you can put up walls or fortifications to the left and to the right, so it looks like an actually possible bridge and people can still shoot it. Or you can put down an actual drawbridge, which is what I'm going to do now. But as I said, you might want to think about that and putting it down in a different way. Okay, so, and I have something even cooler. 
because of the way where I set things up. So I'm going to put away this. You don't know why. We will see soon. We will see soon, yeah, I'm sure. English. Not my first language. Please keep in mind, I know you know that <laughs> English is not my first language. It's pretty evident. <laughs> okay, so. Bam. This is where the river goes. This is also where the moat flows in. And... Yeah, this should be all right. Right second, we are waiting with this area. Doing this last. You can put up a floor bar. Of course, if you put down a floor bar, uh, not the floor bar, um, um, how it is called? B, T, uh, no, um, engineer stuff. Where is it? B. Not support. Traction restraint. Just levers. No meshing components. There it is. I. No. Not. This is an instrument. M. Meshing components. Um. You can put down. Uh. It's also not here. Okay. What the hell? The name is Floodgate. And I cannot find it right now. So I'm leaving it at that. Just look up Floodgate, uh, because then you can regulate the flow of the water inside or out of your fortress by opening and closing the Floodgate. That's basically what I wanted to say here. <laughs> Okay, so chopping down this, putting out this. Okay, so what? An appropriate dick square? Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh. whoa. Oh, yeah. This is, this is what happens when you are a bit stupid and don't remember that you actually left this whole area alone. So exactly this will not happen. Okay, yeah, put up the floor again. No, a wall. Wall up here. And a wall up here. And put the floor here. Sometimes I'm just stupid. I'm sorry. Just the way I am. Okay. Um, I actually need to put it up here. Like my second layer. Okay. What are you talking about? Imperative dick square, dangerous terrain. Oh, yeah. Steel thief withdraws from society. He's a potash maker. And he claimed a craft dwarf, dwarf workshop. Okay. Yeah, and he began constructing things, so I'm actually getting an artifact out of this, which is nice. Okay, um, so why my guys are currently building things, and they are done, because it's going pretty quick. Okay, this is how you build a normal... Um, come on, C, C, F. This is how you build a normal bridge. It should always be three wide, so the carrions can pass. Okay, here we go. I actually like if I have a bit space not to uh, no. <laughs> if I have a bit space to the left and to the right, then I'm putting fortification up, and it looks more like a bridge. Right now, it just looks like just a plank of wood, but it's, it's all right because down here we are putting a real bridge, and it's going to be this wide, and there's a reason why it's this wide. And I think you will enjoy this reason. I'm putting it up on this corner because then it's closer to my crossbow dwarves. Okay, this should work out. So, a bit longer. Here we go. Large locks. And we are digging 
all the way up here. Removing this ramps. Also these ramps. And just wait until they duck ready. Saying, yeah, I did this wrong. I need to dig it out before I do it. Okay, this should be it. Uh, anyway, yeah, um, back to the catapult. So, we built a catapult here. Why did we build a catapult here? Well, our ballistas are ready to fire. Problem is, let me just fire something so you can see. So, you use it by the way by not in use, it's not in use, nobody's there. Prepare to fire means that there are siege engineers running to it and waiting for it to fire. And as soon as you say fire at will, he will start shooting, get new ammunition, start shooting, and so on and so forth. Okay, this was a perfect stone. Then it lands down here, and then you have a stone here. And because of the ramp, it goes back. Problem is, um, as long as you don't have a really good siege operator... Come on, fire. Uh, okay, it works every time, but it's going to the left and to the right, and it's dropping early and stuff. So you don't want to rely on it. You also don't want to ri uh, rely on using catapults because catapults are horrible <laughs> for defending fortresses. Um, basically, if I would have a dwarf standing here, it will not even connect. It needs to go, I think, at least 30, 30 or 20 or something like that tiles before it even is producing damage. So it's quite ridiculous. And that's why I cannot recommend, uh, recommend catapults for anything. It's not even that it's like dropping on top of the enemy or something like you couldn't even shoot it from from a higher position and it will make damage. If someone would stand down here, um, they will not even get problems if the stone lands on them. Um, same goes for the ballista arrows, by the way. Uh, yeah, OK, it's working every time now because we are looking at it. But as soon as we are going out, it will not hit at all. Like I'm not even concerned about all these doggies here. See? Passing through. Okay, and this one went back here and crashed. So that is all right. If that happens when you are uh, using just your catapult to try stones out and he is getting better with every shot he fires, this is really bad if you are relying on your steel arrows to reach this area up here while your military is up here because suddenly the thing goes up <laughs> and goes into your military or it just drops and the enemies don't even care. And we got a chalk emit. Oh, nice. Instrument. Instruments are always good as uh, artifacts. Anyway, so this is how this works. And he will just train all day. He just will get stones all day, throw them down there, get new stones. And this way you can also have a really nice way of just removing all the stones that are just lying around in your fortress and are looking really bad. Okay, next spot. So, we are on our way to our finish line here. So, you, you, you. Put it all the way up here. I think this should be fine. This is going to be a wooden bridge. No particular reason. It's just like I like the idea of having a wooden bridge. And you want at least one ramp so your dwarves can get up if they fall in. These arrows. Okay, B, C, D, C. Come on. D, C. Why am I going to the outer chop? Oh yeah, because I still have the, the chop selected. <laughs> okay, this is especially stupid. D, B, C, reclaim. I reclaim all these arrows and all these bolts. I also will collect them, and then I need to tell my guys, of course, that they can get used ammunition from outside. Pormus and Arthur, and Arthur, of course, died. He still needs uh, appropriate memorial, but I will build that off screen, I think. 
Maybe we are waiting for the ghost. At least we are now pretty sure that this whole round here is not reviving. You can make your mold deeper than only one, but I recommend just putting up one. Makes a lot of things a lot easier. Okay. Then I'm digging out this area. Just to give them as little space to move as possible. And make it really attractive to use the, uh, the plateau. And go over this bridge and not just go all the way to the left here. Because right now they could do that. <laughs> and I will lose everything. Every advantage I have. Because um, you cannot go farther than this corner here. So you couldn't, like, even if you wanted, you couldn't just cut off this whole area. But this way, uh, when an enemy spawns here, he's not like, okay, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to walk all the way up here and then around. Or if they're coming from here, they're not like, oh, I'm going to the left side and going around. They try to cross the bridge. And that is as exactly what you want them to do. Because I could basically build a baluster up here or another crossbow hole. Everything is in the reach of possibility. Come on, build a bridge. Okay, so same goes of course for here. Just putting this down and then we will connect the river with our moat because then we will have fish and the river flowing through it. Is this a murky? Yeah, this is a stagnant water. Okay. So we cannot use the water for washing. Let's hope none of my dwarfs are droning. Sometimes they are, that's stupid. Yeah. Okay, because the murky pools are refilling themselves when there is rain, but they will not refill itself as quick as if you will put up a river to it next to it like we're doing right now. We also happen really quickly, so let's remove this. Oh yeah, another thing um, about trees. My you really want no trees next to your... Why is this not getting an auto chop? Bring myself, but let's check. See, I forgot to include this one and now we have a tree here. So, but this is actually a good idea to show you this here so we have a tree here and it's growing up there and if the branches would reach my area here the enemy could crawl in and he even could crawl over the fortification that is the thing here that we really need to keep in mind also my dwarves are getting thirsty while are on the job that is the thing you really don't want and one of the reasons that this is happening is that my dwarves don't have any flasks so um what metal do I have? Hematite, bitumus, bronze. Okay, let's see. Stocks, E, bar. Do I have copper bars? Yes, but not a lot. Do I have zinc? No. How much bronze do I have? Not a lot. Only thing I have a lot is iron, but iron is heavy. I think I'm going with iron here. I have a few iron bars. Don't have anything else. Yeah, okay, good. So. Um, weapons, ammunition, furniture, siege equipment, other objects. Iron, flask. Later you can create flasks that are not that heavy, but Right now I don't have a choice. Where is it? <coughs> Forge iron flasks. And I actually need a lot of those, so I'm just putting up a repeat here. Just need to keep in mind that there's a repeat on that. So I don't run into trouble. Okay, everything here works. The way it should.
and then we're connecting it to the river. What are you? A deer woman. Giant flying squirrels. <laughs> okay, and this is slowly filling up, just the way I want it to be. So, let's make a fortification along here. You want a fortification because it looks nicer than just the bridge itself. And you want a fortification so you can shoot through it. Okay, then we will connect the bridge to a lever. And later I will have um, a designated area where everybody, where everything is just levers. But right now we kind of need to settle for building it like this. B, C, no, B, T, L. Because there's always somebody up here so I can be assured that why is there food lying around? Giant fly roast food. Exact. Do we have too much food? <laughs> Is that a problem? I think so. Holy hell. It's just lying around. Alright. I guess. Could be worse. Could be no food around. Okay. Next question. Why did you, where's all my alcohol going? Down here, it seems. Okay, I just delete this. So they put the alcohol where I need it. Because the food is everywhere, but the alcohol is a problem right now. Okay, they put up down the fortifications. So just imagine enemies coming, needing to cross the bridge, getting shot at all the way from my crossbow dwarfs up here and of course now I'm going to connect this lever to this bridge and I need good mechanism for it because I want to it to go down as quick as possible I don't have a lot of good mechanisms but I will rebuild this whole thing later anyway so I guess we're just going with this one because I need to re um, rebuild the whole lever thing. Can they get down there? They can get up there. Nice. Because you don't want guys to spawn here. They cannot cross down here anymore. And they need to go all the way up here. Actually, let's make sure that there aren't... Because if a Chiron would spawn here, they could not go up there because it's not three, three spaces. So I am putting up another bridge. And I'm making it really big. So I can be sure that there won't be trees growing around it. That's also why I'm going to chop down the trees and right next to them. Okay. So what is what you told me? Sent height, yeah. Okay, I made all of the heights that I found. I made them into backpacks. So, my military dwarves are carrying around food now. And I hope everybody's getting an iron flask so they can carry drinks and don't have to be thirsty while they're on guard. Okay, so for that, seems to be working. I will work on that as soon as this video is over. Okay, so it's connected now. So just imagine I'm seeing enemies coming down this area and they want to cross the bridge. I'm waiting until half of them cross the bridge. And then I'm telling my guy that is just standing here, hey, pull a lever. And here we go, pull a lever. And this bridge will retract. And <laughs> what's happening to the kitty? Oh, she's stunned. <laughs> she got the bridge. <laughs> And everybody that is standing on the bridge will fall into the water. And either they manage to get out or they will drown. And I ha basically have half their army in half because they cannot swim over. Because once this is seven deep, they need to be legendary swimmers to get it. So I just half the enemy. And the uh, first half will come. And the second half needs to get all the way around here. All the way across my fire. 
And you can of course have a second bridge, so you can just put them away <laughs> after they are in here and put this one up again so they will run back. Uh, yeah, I'm not about this kind of defense. I prefer having it straight up. So it's just a nice, it's a nice gag basically. And it's really fun if they are having like really strong characters like Leg uh, never I think I've never seen a legendary fighter, but I do have seen stuff like um, dog riders. And dog riders are always charging up ahead because they are quicker. And or walk walk riders like big wolf creatures or I don't know how, how the dogs are called. I haven't seen them in a while, but. Sometimes they are big dogs, yeah, big dogs. And sometimes they're riding in big dogs and the big dogs will be the first guys that arrive there. And if you can just sink them, that is actually really, really satisfying. Okay, or you just let them through, then you open it and you wait till, till the others get around. This will take them a lot longer because they will be under crossbow hail, of course. And once the big dogs arrive in your bridge, you are firing your steel bolts. And that will work pretty well. Talking about working really well, um, we need to stop him making Iron Floss. I have this feeling that Iron Floss all around him. I do have a tin nest box. Holy hell. Melt this thing. <laughs> Did I even put a melt? Ah, don't care. Okay. No, he's not even on that. Okay. So, more Floss, please. Everybody should have a flask. Uh, my hospital is working. The well is still up. Bucket is full because I have an aquifer down here. So I don't need to. I don't need to worry about the stuff anyway, because I have water inside my fortress. Okay, this is getting flooded now. There's nothing it can go in. No alpine liaison. How curious. The caravan from Kessig Rost has arrived. So I think something happened. And we have our first caravan. Not our first, but our second caravan. Let's hope they have a depot access. Please, please tell me they have a depot access. Um, sometimes you're just overlooking something and then you only find out after they try to get into your fortress that you really, really fucked up. Okay, so let's see. Depot should be reachable. Is it? It is. They have access to it. And they are coming from this area here on the left. So they are, tr no, from the right actually. Okay. But no outpost liaison. This is interesting because the king. The, the goblin, the Lord goblin king is the liaison, which basically means that the king is not coming. And maybe something happened to the king, which would actually be bad for me, because I kind of have something planned for this king. Once I am trying to get my own civilization going. I think the king will walk into a cage trap and then find a pretty terrifying end. <laughs> okay, I think I'm just playing Dwarf Fortress right now and not doing anything military related anymore. But I have done the basic stuff. So we have built a ball tower in this episode. We have built a moat. We have built a trap bridge. We have built another bridge to cross. We made sure that uh, caravans can still uh, reach the area. We put down three ballisters in a way that can cover the entrance for the caravans and still be safe, uh, be sure that they will hit every single one on there. We built up a catapult so our siege operator can train. We put up an auto chop area and we put up a military listening post so we won't be surprised by uh, creatures of the night and stuff that is hidden like goblin children snatchers kobolds werewolves that kind of stuff 
and we also have an easy defense so we can always start shooting when things getting close like when a guy giant flies would return they will be straight up killed like no contest here so this will be the end okay guys um, that's it for this episode i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you learned a lot and i hope that i kind of made it in a way where you are able to play along um, if this was too quick or if something is unclear just ask it in the comments and I see you guys in the next episode of Dwarf Fortress with Balta.